theyeshiva.net. Okay, we'll start a new Maimah today. It's page 123, or Samach Bey's second column. On the top it's going to say, Drushim L'Rosh Hashanah. Page 123, Shir Hamalus Hashem. So, Maimah that relates to uh, Aser Yisimei Tshuva, Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah, the whole season of Elul and Tishrei, Yom Neirayim. And therefore, it begins with the capital of Tehillim, which is, of course, chapter 130, Tehillim Kuf Lamed, which, uh, as you know, the Minig of the Arizal, that has been embraced by most Kehillahs, that during Aser Yisimei Tshuva, we say, Shir Hamalas Mimamakim Krosich Hashem every day, before Baruch Hu, after Yishtabach, Rosh Hashanah, and then Aser Simei Tshuva, and Yom Kippur. Why was this Mizmer chosen? Shira Malas Mimamakim Krasicha Hashem. Well, the Mizmer also speaks about atonement, Kim Chaslicha Laman Tivore, Vuhiyiv Des Yisrael Mekala Venoisov. Here he's going to discuss a deeper dimension of what this Mizmer conveys. So that's why he begins with the Pasuk Shir Hamalus Me'omakim Rosich Hashem. This Maimer, this discourse was said by the Alter Rebbe, by the Balatanya in the year Tov Kuf Nun He, which means 1794. It was Tishrei time probably, so therefore I say 1794, even though it was the new year of Tov Kuf Nun He. Shir Hamalus Me'omakim Rosich Hashem. This is Tehillim Kuf Lamed, as I said, one thirty of Tehillim. So he says, Mimamakim Uloshin Sha'isa Oimek. The Postic doesn't say Shir Hamalis Mimakim Amuk, or Me Amuk, Mimakim Amuk, Mimamakim Loshin Sha'isa Oimek. In Diktuk of Loshin Kaidish, it's a Loshin Mafil. There's Oimek means depth. The pasuk amoik amoik miyim tzeenu deep deep ma'amek is you make depth you cause there the deep depth you create depth oisa oimek mi ma'amakim from that which is ma'amek that which creates depth misham from there from that which is oisa oimek from there I call out to you Hashem vuniskan leimer basayis in my tshuva and as it's brought in kisvei arizal this was instituted to be said during the 10 days of Tshuva from Rosh Hashanah through Yom Kippur. Now there's a bracket here. These are footnotes from the Tzamach Tzedek, where he basically references where this Pasuk is explained everywhere in Chazal, both in terms of Nigla and Nister. So the way he's explained in Makim, is that different than the word in Hametzar, for example? L'chaira, yeah. Yeah. So he says, Begemara, you have this Pasuk in Brachas and Tainus and Medrash Rabba Vayikra and Shir Hashirim and Kahelis Rabba in Zoyer and Mikdash Melech and Ramaz. Now, this is before Google, before Oitzer HaChachma, so don't take this for granted. Everywhere that this Pasuk is explained, in, in Nigla or Nister, the Tzamech Tzedek references, because that's how he, uh, he wanted to always give an encyclopedic, full comprehensive coverage of every Pasuk. Okay. We go now at, at the end of the brackets, one, two, four, six lines later, for one, two, three, four, six lines later. Key. V'chol hashana ha'adam ha'elech ha'chashir u'slibu k'meshakosav k'ipano elai o'erif. What's the connection of this mizmer to the whole year? So he starts an explanation. A whole year a person may follow shir u'slibu. Shir u'slibu is, of course, an expression that we just learned in the beginning of Nitzavim. Ki b'shir u'slibu elech, according to the uninhibitedness of the heart. As the Pasuk says, Yirmiyah Hanavi says, They turned their back to me. They turned their back to me. In other words, this doesn't mean physically you turn your back. It means emotionally you're not interested in me. We're not, we're not connected in an enthusiastic way. That's Kipanu Eli Oirev. They turned their back. Avol, Baser Simei Tshuva, comes Baser Simei Tshuva, Bechol Yom V'yom, every single day, Kol Echad V'echad, Neskara V'el Hashem Yisbaruch. Every day, every soul, becomes close to Hashem, V'nis'ala Bechol Yom Yoyser, and becomes sublimated, elevated, each day more, Ad Yom Kippur, until Yom Kippur. 
what happens in Kippur, Venasim Kol Neshama Zisrael Nimashem Yisbarach Pana B'Pana. Throughout these days, until the crescendo, the zenith, the peak on Yom Kippur, all the souls of the Jewish people become with Hashem, Panem B'Panem, face to face. Unlike the Panu Eli Oyrif, which is face to back, or back to face, or back to back, it's Panem B'Panem. For whom Machmas Rotsen. It's always about Rotsen. Shurit Soyne Shal Kal Adam Liskarav Al Hashem Yisbarach B'Bchinas Panem. That there's the Rotsen of a person to come close to Hashem, face to face. It's about Rotsen. In other words, the difference of back-to-back and face-to-face, physically, I could be looking at you, I could not be looking at you. Emotionally, what it represents is, you can't really be with your back to God, because Moloi Chalar, it's Kvayde. So, so what's so what's, what's say to you with your back? It's not like a person I could turn away to, and I go away from you. That's why he says it's Machmas Ratzin. The question is where your desire is, where your passion is, where your enthusiasm is. It's a famous marshal that he brings elsewhere. If a person, the marshal, has to pay severance pay to an employee who uh, manipulated him or damaged the business or whatever, they have they have some beef between each other. But the court says, or the rabbi says, you got to pay him. So he may come in every Friday for his check, but you don't want to give it to him face to face, so you give it to the secretary. Or if you have to give it to him, you think, <coughs> it's a little expression, shadi kasva, you throw it over your back. In other words, you're not interested in giving it with, with enthusiasm, with passion. You give it because you're forced to give it. So there's a relationship back-to-back, which means people could be connected to each other. But they're not passionate about each other. They don't care for each other. There's no ruts in there. There's no desire there. It's a compelled relationship. It's, it's robotic. It's like, you know, it's mechanical. It's mitzvah sanashem alamada. There's no ruts in So it's not ponem beponem. It's called achirayim. Kepano elai oirif. Your back is directed to me. You may be right near me, but it's Panoi Layarif. He says, What well, the the Kudava Sarasimai Truva is that these are times that are invested with an energy that compels the soul to enter into an intimate face to face relationship with the with the Rebbeinu Shalom. Now when you say about times of the year, it's just important as a Yusai to understand that the way the Hashkafa of Yiddishkeit is not that holidays are ceremonial. <coughs> Meaning, different times of the year, you have different holidays to commemorate things. Because what's the difference between one day and another day? You know, the clock moves and ticks and doesn't stop for anybody. And, uh, okay, so here you make a Hanukkah, you make a Purim, you make a Tubishvat, you make a Pesach. First day of Tishri, you make a Rosh Hashanah, the tenth day you make a Yom Kippur. So it's holidays, yeah. Somebody once said he used to be an atheist, but he stopped because they don't have any holidays. <laughs> You know, what, what, atheists don't have holidays. What are you going to celebrate? You know, the random, uh, the random evolution of uh, 15.3 billion years. What are you celebrating? Nothing ever happened. Right? So he, he said, if he became religious, he wanted latkes. Okay. Maybe it's not such a joke. Maybe it's true, huh? They don't celebrate the Big Bang. <laughs> There's nothing to celebrate. What are you going to celebrate with the Big Bang? <laughs> So, and when, when, when are you going to celebrate Rosh Hashanah? <laughs> when are you going to celebrate the big one? <laughs> but in Yiddishkeit, the pshat is, different days are invested with different qualities. That's why throughout Chumash, Yom Tov is called Mikra Kodesh. It's a very strange expression, Mikra Kodesh. It calls out, it, the day calls out. It's a Mikra, it summons, it summons you to holiness. Days are invested with different qualities. The seventh day of the week has a certain energy, a certain quality. The time has a certain energy. Elul, Tishrei, Sukkot. The time is invested with certain properties, with certain energies. So when he says on Aserisim Etshuva, Kol Echad Vechad Neskarev. What are he saying about this is Halacha? Everyone is Neskarev? We know different people have different experiences. Aserisim Etshuva. Some people are Neskarev. Some people... The, 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 the energy of the year, it's a time that the time is invested with that quality that somebody whose antennas are sensitive to the energy of the time and sensitive to their own souls, the soul is then on a journey of Kiruv. It's, it's, it's part of the quality of the time. And what is the Kiruv? To become Ponim Bepon. You wanted to say something? No, there was a Domsky you said many months ago. Ah, Mikra Kaidish, yeah. The Farish Lima, yeah. Now, to explain this, this is his intro. 
For this, you have to understand what is a neshama, what are neshama Yisrael. You say the word neshama, neshama of a Yisrael, neshama Yisrael, the souls of Yisrael. What is this? That's the question he raises in this Maimar. What is in your neshama Yisrael? What are neshama Yisrael? The loike ma'isha soivri ma'olam. So nish v'develt meint. It's not what the world teaches what a neshama, what neshama Yisrael are. Now, when he says a loike ma'isha soivri ma'olam, he doesn't mean. He doesn't mean a hefkevelt. He doesn't mean the world, uh, the secular world. That's not what he's talking about. You'll see soon, he's talking about the oilam. He means the Jewish world. <laughs> what does the world say? What's an ashama? An ashama, hirak, hachius, vaseichel, shabatoichad. A body is a corpse on its own. The body needs electricity. A body is a battery, an engine. The neshama is the chius. It's the life force of the body. It's the chius, the life of the body. For a body to function, it's a body is not just a machine, it's a sophisticated and complex, extraordinarily complex machine. There's no machine that comes close in its genius, in its intricacy, intricacies and brilliance and dazzling goodness uh, like the body. It's literally second to second the amount of 100 million neurons that work together in a brain to make decisions millisecond by millisecond and have uh, 50 or 60 trillion cells coordinated in a body. So this is Stam. Where did the body become such a gone oilam that already in the fetus, in, in, in the womb of its mother, right? how it develops and creates and functions throughout life from one cell of a sperm and an egg to develop into a full body and then to function as a full body. This is the very few miracles could come close to that miracle. So what is this attributed to? It's attributed to, we say, there's an neshama. There's a life force, there's a spiritual life force in, in, in the body that, so to speak, uh, the spiritual DNA that has its code, that has its wisdom, and is responsible for the chiyus of the body. Okay, now this is not a bad definition for the soul. It's a definition that's given in many, many svarim. And then he adds, v'aseich, the capacity for inquisitiveness, the capacity for understanding, because the first definition exists in every animal. And not only in every animal, even in a bush, in a flower, in a tree, any living organism. The smallest organism is also brilliant. It's brilliant in ways that people can't imagine. Today we begin to scratch the surface a little bit of, 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 of the brilliance of a, f- a flower. Never mind of, of a bee or a mosquito or a, or a beetle especially a beetle, but, uh, but uh, never mind the human brain. But this is chayis. Then you have the, the ability of seichel. Seichel is that what they call the homo sapien is a curious animal, is inquisitive, can ask questions about what truth is. So he says, <laughs> Through which one could comprehend the reality of the Rebbein Nishalaylam of Hashem, which is unique to the soul of the human being. Because... The soul of an animal, as far as we know, or what we observe, it has one question, and that is, where is my next meal coming from? And for many people, that's also the only question. <laughs> where is the next meal coming from, and when is the next meal coming? And that's important. The neshama is the ability to be able to ask questions that are more abstract, more transcendent. What's truth? Is there truth? Where do I come from? Who created the world? But Essentially, then, the neshama would be the capacity for seichel. So in seichel, you can understand God. You can understand other things. You could study mathematics. Right? You could study astronomy. You could study biology. You could study many things. So seichel machedem, other seichels, shemasigim, asigim yana machedem. Bevadai eini nikri neshama sisra. This is not the ultimate definition of neshama sisra. Ki ha neshama yichele kelekami mal shulam ayla maaseichel. The truth of a soul is that it's not just a life force, and it's not just an intellectual capacity to understand transcendent reality, even though that's true, but that's not the real definition of a nisham. The real definition of a nisham is so to speak, a fragment or a piece of Hashem himself. And God is beyond seichel. So therefore, in essence, the nisham is not just an intellectual creature, a spiritual creature, a profound creature, 
but rather, in its ultimate definition, the Nisham is actually a chelik alekami mal, it's kivayochel, a piece of Hashem himself. I say kivayochel because chelik, of course, is a euphemism. It doesn't mean chelik, that it's a divisible reality that you cut into parts, like a birthday cake, or like a cheesecake that you put, put in, fine into chalak. Chelik here is reflective that the quality of the neshama is divine. It's a spark, it's a fragment, it's an union of the divine himself. Ah, you'll ask a question. There's hundreds of works of Jewish philosophy. The oilam, the world that he describes here, who is he talking about? He's talking about the world of the Rambam, the world of Rapsad Yagon, the world of the Ral Bagd, the world of the Sefer Ikrim, the great Barbanel, the great Jewish philosophers of Machshevis Yisrael who all discuss Neshama. And they discuss in Neshama, the Rambam, for example, as the Chius and as the Seichel, the capacity for Seichel, for Haskola, for curiosity, for understanding. So when he says, I told you, he doesn't mean a boorish world, a brute world. He means a sophisticated Jewish world. So now you're saying it's not that. It's something else. That's why he's bothered by this. He says, Acha Inyan. Let's put it into context. You could talk about the Neshama on two levels. You could, the first Jew, the grandson of the first Jew, Yaakov Avinu, the father of Klai Yisrael, has two names, Yaakov and Yisrael. Every Jew has two names. Every Jewish soul has two colors. There's the Yaakov of the soul and the Yisrael of the soul. All the Svarim that speak about, about soul in terms of Chiyos, in terms of Seichel, are addressing the Yaakov dimension of the soul. When he said, it's not like the world says what a neshama is. It's really something else. It's addressing the Yisrael dimension of the soul. So therefore, there's no contradiction. All the descriptions about a neshama that you learned are true when you want to address the Yaakov dimension of the soul. The description, he says here, it's chelik elekami mal, and therefore, just like God is beyond intellect. God is not just an intellectual mind who understands things. Hashem is beyond seichel, and therefore the neshama is also beyond seichel. That's the Yisrael dimension of the soul. And he starts explaining. Even Nakdim, let's introduce Lahavan to understand Pidush. Hashemayim kisi varitz adem ragloi. Shaya Navi says in Perik Samachvav, the after of Erev Rishchodesh and Bereshis, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. So it's a euphemism. The Navi says, Hashem says, so to speak, I sit on the heavens. It's like my chair, and the whole earth that you see, adem ragloi, it's my footstool. What does he mean by a footstool? He's trying to say that it's a low plane of reality. It's basically a shraf shraf is a footstool. You're sitting on a couch, you pick up your feet, you want to support your feet on something, you put it on a footstool. So the whole Eretz, the whole planet Earth, it's not like Shemayim. Shemayim is my throne, I sit on it. The Eretz is shraf shraf, it's my footstool. Hashemayim kisi, the heaven is my throne. is a much higher plane, a much higher space. And, and this pshat is the emes, it's true. Why? The angels above, they stand constantly with awe and reverence, without any alien thoughts. They're always cognizant of godliness in a very revealed way. When it comes to the earth, you have no revelation of godliness. So Shemayim here is not only referring to the physical heavens, but Shemayim is talking about spiritual planes. So for example, you have the Malachim, spiritual creatures. They don't have any machshav azaras, no distractions, no alien thoughts. They're always cognizant of godliness because there's always revelation of the reality of Hashem in the earth. It's not like that. There's many distractions and many questions and dilemmas and problems because there's no revelation of God whatsoever in our world. It's a, it's a much lower space in terms of spiritual sensitivity. So it's called Ha'aretz Hadoim Ragli. But this itself is strange. Shari Nemar, the Pasuk says, the Navi Malachi tells us, Ani Hashem Loishanisi. I, God, have never changed. And he touches, what does it mean, Loishanisi means? That there's absolutely no change. Heaven, earth, before creation, after creation, Ani Hashem Loishan Nisi, there's no changes of Ani Hashem. Why are we saying here, on the other hand, that heaven and earth are so different? Achatiru the answer for this is, Vihine, Yesh Beis Prinas, Soiviv Kalalman, Umamale Kalalman. There's two dimensions, Soiviv Kalalman and Mamale Kalalman. Soiviv, he transcends the worlds, Mamali fills the worlds. Vihine, Bebchines, Soiviv, Kalalman, Ein Shum Shinui. 
קודם הבריאה, לאחר הבריאה, בכל אלו מסל יונים ותחתונים בשווה, כי עיגול שמסעגל ומסבב אף למטה. When we speak about Tzoyviv, there's no change before creation, after creation, higher worlds, lower worlds, heaven, earth. It's identical every space, every moment, every circumstance, every situation, even creation has not changed that in the slightest. Like an eagle, it's called Tzoyviv, it's like a circle. A circle, you don't say there's a property on the top of the circle that's different than the bottom of the circle. Misagal and Misavev, it's a full same circle, higher, lower. Take, let's say, uh, a Samach, if it, if it would be a perfect circle, right? Any way, any, if you turn it around, it's going to be the same. If you turn it over on its head, it's not going to change. You, you take an Al, you take a Yud, you take any letter of the Olive Bays, right? You turn it to the side, you have a different letter. It's a different letter, it depends. It's all about positioning. There's the higher part, there's the lower part, there's the right, there's the left. A full circle, any direction, put it on this side, put it on that side. Turn it over, the mata, the maila, yamin, smile, it's all the same circle. This is soiv of kalam. And he says, It's beyond intellect and it's beyond time. Past, present, and future is all in one moment. Which Seichel can't comprehend. It's basically the name Yudke Vovke, which is Hoya, Hoiva Viyya, was, is, and will be all in the same word in one moment, because it transcends the properties of time and therefore space. Zman, Seichel, and Mok. There is change, and we just said there's heaven and earth, and they're so different. This is when you're addressing Mamalakala. The the Mishnah says in Pirkei Yavis, Pirkei Hashem created the world through ten distinct utterances. It says ten times, Vayoymer in Bereshis. The Gemara Rosh Hashanah says, doesn't say ten, it says nine. Bereshis is also a mimer. So you have Bereshis, Baruch Lekim Mishnah Shemayim Baruch. Vayoymer Lekim Yehi Or. Vayoymer Lekim Yehi Rakiya. Vayoymer Lekim Tachiya Aretz Desha. Vayoymer Lekim Yehi Ma'aretz Berakiya Shemayim, etc. Every creation or set of creations were created through an utterance, through a dibur. Ma'amores nivrahan, different ma'amores. Shenishtal shalu, ma'amor yihiyar vayihikain. Yihirakiya vayihikain. And there's an evolutionary process, nishtal shalu means there's a chain of the utterance, let there be light, and then there is light. Let there be heaven, and there is heaven, that's the first two days. Yihiyar is day one, yihirakiya is day two, and then it continues. Vashinu hu mitzada mekablim. And the change is always from the recipient's perspective. Every world comprehends and experiences things according to its capacity. That's why the Navi says the heaven is my throne. Higher worlds comprehend more godliness. The earth is my footstool. That's a lower madrega which does not comprehend so much. It comprehends less. So, the Alter Rebbe here, the Balatanya, distinguishes between two different forms or projections of divine energy. One, Saiv of Kalaman, one, Mamala Kalaman. What is the difference? Mamala Kalaman means, as we learned quite a few times, he fills the world. What does it mean he fills the worlds? That represents the Chios, the energy that is tailor made and custom made. To every nivra according to its unique chemistry. It's really the other way around. The chemistry of every nivra is tailor-made, is based on the type of divine energy that creates it and sustains it and relates to it. Its physical properties, its let's call it its atomic structure, its molecular structure, is basically based on the Asara Mamaris, based on the Dvar Hashem, the energy that is being communicated to this nivra according to what Hashem's plan and design and will was for this nivra. So you can't compare the energy of the, 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 the reality of a rock, how a rock perceives itself, or how we perceive it, to the reality of a human mind, to the reality of an animal, to the reality of a blade of grass, to the reality of a star. Everything has its unique properties, physical properties, 
based on spiritual properties. That's the oil, that's mamali, it fills everything, and here there's major differences. You can't compare the perceptiveness of heaven to the perceptiveness of earth. You can't compare shamayim to Eretz, you can't compare Erlem Asaliyayim to Erlem Asaliyayim, you can't compare one person to another person. This is the individuated source of creation, which changes with every person, every day, every moment, based on the macabre, based on what I could perceive according to my mind. It's a tutorial. It's like, it's like uh, you have one tutor could teach ten kids a day. Every child gets a different type of shir, a different type of lesson. Why? Based on what this person can perceive, what this person can experience. That's all mamalakalam. And even if it's the same shir, but every person takes it differently based on who they are. So Mamala Kalalman is the energy that every oilam could take according to its capacity. Of course, this Shinuyim. Creation changed a lot. And you can't compare one person to another person, one state to another state, heaven to earth. That's Mamala Kalam. What's Saiviv Kalam? Saiviv is like a circle. That's why it's called Saiviv. What do we mean it's like a circle? He doesn't mean spatially it's like a circle. He means conceptually it's like a circle. There's no difference between the grain of sand's relationship to Saiviv and the highest angel's relationship to Saiviv. I, the grain of sand, you look at it and all you see is a grain of sand. You don't even see a drop or any glimmer or ray of divinity. And here you're talking with an, an angel or a soul or a higher world, Ganeidin Elam Haba. The difference is in Mamali Kalam. In other words, what they project in a manifested way based on how they define their identity. But Saiviv is the divine presence, the divine energy that remains fully infinite, fully divine, just like it was before creation. And creation hasn't changed that a bit. And a lower world and a higher world, Saiviv Kalalman is fully present because in that circle, any place, any higher, lower, there's no difference. The infinite presence of Hashem is in every situation, in every circumstance, in every reality, in every moment, in every person, in every creature, in its full infinite intensity as it was before creation without any difference. I, mitzad this, there's no difference. Ani Hashem leishan is here. Mitzad this, there's no difference. Why then do people feel so different? And why there's so many different madregas? That's only mitzad. Memalek halalman. Memalek halalman is that Hashem allowed there to be a tzimtzum, that his oil should be restricted and limited, as explained at length in Tikkun B'chay de Shoifer and other Maimarim, where there is a tremendous restriction and limitation, and every nivra and every world gets according to a dosage, according to its capacity, physical capacity, emotional capacity, spiritual capacity, and again, it's the other way around. It's the type of chiyus that gets communicated to it that creates that type of, that type of identity. And as we discussed a few times, this is the two streams of consciousness which allow, and not only allow, but welcome and warrant two very different experiences of life. One is where there is unique individuality, where one is different than the other, and you cannot have one person being like any other person. On the contrary, Mamalik Alaman means Basara Mamaris Nivra Oilam, every creature has its unique mimer, and if I want your mimer, I'm already confusing my seberatius. It's a confusion of my seberatius. And just like a man is not an animal, a person is not an animal, every person has their own neshama, their own unique chiz, their own mamala kalalman. Just like in the body, you can't compare what the brain needs to what the heart needs to what the foot needs. It's a whole different experience. Each one has its function, its uniqueness, his or her individual mission, destiny, purpose, identity on every level. That's Mitzad Mamale. And then there's another component where there's an absolute oneness and harmonious unity, where everything is really part of one collective, Mitzad Saiv of Kalalman, where the highest and the lowest are all in the same space. The space of Saiv of Kalalman. But by definition, Saiv is not felt and experienced in the individual parameters of one's identity because. What allows there to be these parameters, what allows there to be these walls, these realms, is that the energy is restricted and tailor-made to the individual capacity of, of, the, of the person. Like the tutor who teaches every student differently, because if you just have the Rosh Hashiva giving a shir to the 6-year-old and the 10-year-old and the 20-year-old and the 25-year-old and the Medrash, 
nobody will understand the thing. Certainly the kids will go right over the head. I mean, I know what happens, <laughs> but you can have a classroom and you have a teacher and it's gewaldic, but no one understands the words because it's not tailor-made to the individual capacity of the person. So this answers the question of we two strands in Tanakh, two streams in Tanakh, Ani Hashem Loi Shanisi on one level, Hashemayim Va'aretz Ani Mole, everything is the same, and on another level there's Shemayim and there's Eretz, there's Malachim and there's Earth and there's Higher and there's Lower and there's Before Creation and there's After Creation. We say in the morning, Atu Atsha Loi Nivra Ha'olam, Atu Humisha Nivra Ha'olam, which means not only you were there before and after, because then the word who would have been extra, right? Atuhu actually nevroilam, atuhu mission nevroilam, it's the zelbahu. It's not that you were there always, you know, you're like the ultimate witness. The who, it says this in Tanya, the who explains that what, that it's the same, per, it's the same reality, mitzad soiviv, mitzad mamali, there's a big difference. Now, if this is the case when it comes to the entire existence of the universes he now makes this and he says now let's take this back to the individual person back to the individual person okay. now there is again a long brackets here but we're going to go to after the brackets the brackets go for around 10 lines till the word vihine the line starts vihine just like in the general flow of divine energy this two dimensions soiviv and mamale here is the key. In the soul of the human being, you have these two aspects. The memale and the soiviv are projected in the neshama itself. Al-Zen, on this deposit says in Bereshis, Vayivra elikim esa adam, Vayivra esa adam betzalmoi betzalem elikim. In the end of the story of creation, it says Hashem created man, B'tzalma, in his image, B'tzalem Elikim, in the image of Elikim. Obviously, there's a redundancy. Could have said, Vayivre Sa'adam, either B'tzalma or B'tzalem Elikim. B'tzalma means in his image. No, in his image, B'tzalem Elikim. So he says, there's two different neshamas. A tale of two souls. There's two neshamas. There's the neshama that is B'tzalma, and there's neshama that's betzelem eleikim. V'zel v'inyim beis apchin is Yaakov Yisro. That's what we meant when we said the neshama has two dimensions, the Yaakov, the Yisro. V'ayivre asadam betzalmoi. How many images does God have? It's betzalmoi or tzelem eleikim. See, teaching it. Tzalmoi refers to mamala kalam. Tzelem eleikim refers to soiv of kalam. The neshama is both betzalmoi. The neshama is both an expression of mamala kalam. The neshama is also an expression of soiv of kalam. The neshama also has the dimension in it of soiv of kalam. That's b'tselem elikim. One is called the Yaakov of the soul, one is called the Yisro. What's the difference? So he says, p'chines Yaakov, after the brackets, p'chines Yaakov, yud Akiv. Yaakov is made up of two words, Yaakov. Akiv is, of course, the soul, the soul of the foot. And Yaakov is the yud of the Akiv. Why was Yaakov named Yaakov? So the Pasuk says and told us, because when he comes out, he's holding on to the soul of his brother Esau. He's literally holding on to his foot. So we call him Yaakov. Now that's a way, that's a way to name a child. You're holding on to the soul of your brother, so we name you based on the foot of your brother. <laughs> it's not even his own foot. He wasn't even holding on to his own foot. So it's a very cute way of a baby coming out. Today there would be pictures and, and, and WhatsApps and videos of, of, of this cute little uh, twin brother holding on. So that becomes his name. Yodoy Oichezes, I'm holding on to your soul, so that's my name. So of course this describes something about Yaakov himself. It's not just about Esau's Akiv, it's about his own Akiv, about himself. So Yud Akiv, that's Yaakov. What does this represent? Yud is Chachma. Generally the letter Yud represents conception, chachma, the ability, the ability of a soul to have the haseichel that can comprehend godliness. That's yud. Then you have the feet of the soul. The head of the soul, metaphorically speaking, is the intellectual 
spiritual capacity of the soul to comprehend godliness, that's the yud. Then you have the legs of the soul, in other words, the, the extension of the soul, and that is it's electri- it's the fact that it's, an elect- so to speak, an electrical force that can give life to all of the 248 limbs of the body. So when we spoke before that the soul is a chayus and the soul is a seichel, that's the yud and the ekev. The yud of the neshama is the spiritual quality that it can comprehend godliness. The ekev of the neshama is the ragli ha the feet of the neshama, which is, so to speak, an extension of its core, which gives chiyus to the whole body. Upchin is Yisrael, then you have the Yisrael of the soul. Yisrael of the soul, Yisrael is two words, li rosh. The first letter of Yisrael is Yud, the last letter is Lamed, and the middle is Shin Reish Aleph, so it's li rosh, it's the opposite of Yaakov. Yaakov is Akev, the soul, the foot. Yisrael is li rosh, which means my head, or a head to me, or a head for me. And those are the two names of Yaakov. At one stage in life, he's called Yaakov. At a later stage in life, he has a name transformation to Yisrael, and the Pasuk says, why am I naming you Yisrael? The angel that he was fighting with tells him, Ki sarise Rashi says, Sarisa from the word Sar. You became a Sar, a prince, a minister, a leader. You wrestled. That's also a concept of a Rosh, a leader. Here he says, Yisrael is Li Rosh. What is that? This is the aspect of the soul that transcends the body and it transcends the seich. So therefore we made here a shalom bias between the two streams of the way, the two streams in Yiddishkeit, the way a neshama is described. In many svarim, what you'll hear about a neshama is the life force and the seichel, and that's Yaakov. Yud Ekev, that's Yaakov. That's one aspect of the neshama. When he said, don't think it's like the world says, a neshama is chiyas and seichel, he wasn't negating it exclusively. He was saying that's one aspect of the neshama. Then there's the aspect of the neshama that's Yisrael, that's higher than the guf and higher than the seichel. What do we mean it's higher than the guf and higher than the seichel? Not that it's not in the guf. Not that it's not in the seichel. Just like Seif of Kalalman is in the guf also. It's in the seichel also. But it means it's not defined just as a force that gives vitality to the body. Not only is it not defined as that, it's not even defined as an intellectual, spiritual creature, like an angel, that's capable of being an antenna to very deep truth and the greatest truth, which is the truth of God. That's all Yaakov of the soul. Yisrael of the soul is l'mayla menaguf, l'mayla menaseichos. So what is it? Opchinezu dispchinezu of the soul, this dimension. He echod yochid umiyuchid im Hashem is baruch belishum pirud b'shumayfu. This dimension of the soul is using the words of the piyut. Echad yochid umiyuchid is one singular, united, indivisible, cannot be fragmented, cannot be separated, it's completely one and unified with Hashem, belishum pirud without any separation, b'shum oifun under any circumstances. This dimension of the soul cannot be separated from Hashem ever. It's always completely united with Hashem. It could never be separated. Why? Because its definition is a chelik alikamima. If the definition of an Hashem is a spiritual life force or an intellectual capacity, sometimes its relationship could be compromised. But because we said that this aspect of an Hashem is what? It is a chelik alikamima. So it could never be not what it is. It, it, you cannot be what you're not. <laughs> you could be what you can be, but you cannot deny who you are in your very core, in your very essence. Some things you can just, you can't, you, the person can't undo. So therefore, the neshama of Yisrael is not only a spiritual life force or intellectual capacity. What is it? It's echad yachid umayuchad Hashem Yisbarach. So therefore, nothing ever can separate it from Hashem because its very essence, its very identity is the divine. So this is the neshama, one aspect which is a reflection of Mamala Kalalman, and one is a reflection of Saiv of Kalalman, one is Betzalmai, one is Betzalam Alekim, one is Yaakov, one is Yisrael. Mamala Kalalman of the neshama means the way the neshama, so to speak, assumes an identity of a spiritual creature based on the divine energy that comes into it. And still there, it's different than every other nivra. It's betzalma. You don't say that about an animal. You don't say that about any other creature. It's the uniqueness of betzalma melekim asa sa'adam, but the neshama is betzalma. There's a deeper element in the neshama. Betzalma melekim, 
which is not a reflection of Bamali, but it's a reflection of Saif of Kalalman, meaning that it's fully, fully one. It is, it is part of the divine itself, the divine reality itself, beyond Seichel, beyond Guf, so it's not defined by time, by space. In some circumstances it's connected, some circumstances it's not connected, sometimes it's attached, sometimes it's detached, sometimes it's aware, sometimes it's unaware. Its very core is divine. So every minute, every space, every circumstance, every experience, every moment of life, through all situations, it remains what it is, and that is fully divine. Echad, yachad, and miyuchad, Is that part of me, or is that more like a makif or a mazal, that, that part of the neshama? You want to know, is this part of you, or it's more of a makif? It's not part of you, and it's not a makif. That is you. That's what he's going to explain. Not only is it part of you, not only the of that is the you. We'll see in a moment. We'll see soon. And this dimension exists in every single Jew, even a Kal Shabakala. Kal Shabakala means a lightheaded among the lightheaded, like Kalus Roach is lightheadedness, what we would call in English somebody who's very apathetic or indifferent. She's Kal Shabakala. Or as somebody once said, Kal Shabakala means even the Kalim call him a Kal. <laughs> even the Kalim call him a Kal, right? <laughs> So even a kal shabakalim, if he has an ashama, this exists. Why? You'll say, where's a kal shabakalim? Where's the Torah? Where's the Ruchnis? Where's the mitzvahs? We go back to Saiv of Kalam. In the Mala Kalam, and it's about the perception. What you're feeling, this changes. There's a higher Jew, there's a lower Jew. There's a heavenly Jew, there's an earthly Jew. There's a higher soul, lower soul. There's a soul Yom Kippur, there's a soul after Yom Kippur. <laughs> Right? There's a soul on Labor Day, there's a soul on Memorial Day. <laughs> or July 4th. It's a different, there's before the Cholent, there's after the Cholent. Good mood, bad mood. Mitzat Dispchin of the Yisrael. What's the Yisrael? The Li Reish. In other words, Soiviv. So every situation, what is it? It's Elokus Mamish. So just like there's no difference in space and time, there's no difference between people. So even the Kal Shabakalam has this Pchin. Now here he asks the million dollar question. What are you talking about? Read through Gemara, read through Midrash, and read through Sifrei Musa. Who ever heard of this? Doesn't it say that Jews get cut off from God? What's the whole Issa Karis? Um, he's asking, Umash HaKos of Ikaris Tikaris Hanefesh. It says, Ikaris Tikaris Hanefesh. The souls that cut the soul off from God. Sins. I said, Sins that cut you off from God. Person reads through Chumash. A person reads through Tanakh, a person reads through Gemara, a person reads through Medrashim, Sifre Musr especially. You see what they say about separation? Half the, most of the literature of these days, yeah? you're separated, you have to reconnect, you're severed. Kikaris, the Kikaris, and Nefesh. The Nefesh gets cut off. Cut off from who? Cut off from the Rabbi Shalayla. Physically, spiritually, in terms of how it's expressed. Okay, there's different ways how it's expressed. <coughs> But the concept is, this is a big question. What do you mean that in every Jew, even a Kal Shabakalim, there's a dimension that's Yachid, Miyuchud, Echad, and Mashem is Baruch, and it's not Shaykh to be separated. In other words, Kal Shabakalim means a Jew who sins, does everything wrong in the book. You're telling me he's completely one. What's Pshad? How do you say this? How do you say this? Now, I want you to understand the significance of this question. In all Jewish circles today, you'll hear constantly thrown around, people will read a story in a newspaper about someone, they'll say, ah, the Pintaliyid, right? The Yiddish and the the Pintaliyid, the, there's some Jewish aspect. So some explain it simply as culture. You know, do you say the Pintala Irishman? Could you say the Pintala Irishman? The Pintala Chinaman? You know, it's, it's good. Some people touch it culture. You come from a culture of 4,000 years with genes, so something stays, the chicken soup. The chicken soup doesn't completely get obliterated. Okay, that's how some explain it. But uh, I guess by more Torah Jews, it means but there's a there's a nitzutz, there's there's a ruchnis, there's a there's a The fink, huh? The fink, the funk, the, the spark, the spark, the nitzutz, right? Not not just culture. Not my mother's chicken soup, my grandmother's chicken soup, three thousand years. Knaid lach matzah murr. It does have an impact. It does play games with your uh, chromosomes or whatever, with your, your mice, so it has an impact. Okay. So that's, that's, not, that's just, you know, <laughs> whatever. Every culture has its, 
its unique hang-ups, whatever it may be. Here it may be uh, religion, uh, maybe God, maybe Yom Kippur, maybe Rosh Hashanah. But you call it also on a spiritual level, the Psaq, Kedusha, Dveikus, and so on and so forth. When did this language develop? Pintaliyid, Aneshama, Ayyidish Aneshama, Ahat Ayyidish Aneshama, Ahat Ayyidish Aneshama. When did this, this, this language develop? So generally, if you look in the Torah of Baal Shem Tev, in the base of the Baal Shem Tev, there's a tremendous focus on this. In all the books of all the students of the Baal Shem Tev, throughout all the generations, already from the first generation from the Baal Shem Tev on, everywhere, you know, you, you open a Ketusha Slevi, you open a Noyem Alimela, whatever, any safer of, of that, but even though the concept you have also in Gemara, you'll have Afal Pishachot Yisrael, who you'll have a Rambam in Hilchis Geirishin, where you're allowed to force somebody to give a Kaifin Oisei a Roitzani, what does Roitzani help him? Rambam in Hilchis Geirish and Perik Beis, Halacha Chaf, right? You force a guy to say, I want to give a get, and it's a kosher get. It's a joke. A minute later, he's going to say, the only reason I said I wanted it was because <laughs> to, to get rid of these guys. So the Rambam says, no, that Kivan Shehumi Yisrael, since he's a Jew, Roitzu Lasses Kol HaMitzvah, Ulus Rachik Menavedis, Rak Yitzroi, who... Shatakfoy, and when he kaifenis and he says right sani, so you're being mavatal the external influences. Okay, so the concept you have, but in the Baal Tov's Torah, it's very developed. I should say it's accentuated, it's emphasized, it's discussed a lot. I guess we covered all the visitors from Uman. The Kuti Maharan is filled with it. Uh, Rav Nachman's Torah, and but all the Talmidia Baal Shem Tov, any stream. I, and I don't mean exclusively them. You'll have it in most in most svarim. You'll have that Nakuda. You'll find it by the Ramchal also, etc., etc., but over there it was very much emphasized. But Kedar Koi of the Balatanya, this is what he's questioning. Is this a new development to Judaism? It says, Ikaris to Karis Hamnefesh. There's sometimes you say, Sorry, you were cut off. You're alienated. You're not mine anymore. You cut yourself off. There's no Dveikus anymore. How do you tell me a statement, even a Kal Shabakalam has a dimension that's never separated? This is not just a small question of Alam de Shapilpal, of Satoisvis, he's asking a question. He's questioning here the very aside that there's something in every Jew under all circumstances that can't be separated from God, even a great sinner who's doing Lechaidi Surya Christus. That's a Shiloh. What's his answer? Huh? Aye, it says he cut us to cut us on because he transgressed serious avedas which are make you liable with karis. Karis means you get cut off. That's a shaila. So here, the Baal Atanya gives his answer and says it's all true, but you have to put it in context. Zen nemer apchines Yaakov shenichris mesharsha avol apchines Yisrael. There's two layers of identity. All the Maimari Chazam, all the Psukim that deal with Karis are of course 100% true. They're addressing the layer and identity of Yaakov. Yaakov could get cut off. Yaakov could be connected and Yaakov could get cut off. Depends on how Yaakov lives. Depends on how it uses its mind, how it uses its heart, how it lives in its behavior. On Yaakov, you say everything he caught us to Karas HaNefesh. Never on Yisrael. Yisrael ain't an afraid of many is born of Moshe Moif. Yisrael cannot ever be separated from him. Why not? Because again, it goes back to these two streams of Mamali and Saiva. Mitzad Mamali Kalalman, there could be a change based on the recipient. How open am I to receive the energy? If I cut myself off, I don't receive the energy because the definition of the energy is that I absorb it. If I don't absorb it, I didn't get it. Because the definition of mamali is it fills me. If it doesn't fill me, I put a stopper, I close my eyes, I don't see it. I close my ears, I don't hear it. I close my nose, I don't smell it. I close my mouth, I don't taste it. I shut myself off from it. The definition of me having it is that I experience it. I internalize it in some way. So therefore, if I don't, I don't have it. But the neshama, that save of kalam, and over there, what's the definition of it having it? It's not... I perceive it in a way that I can internalize it and necessarily feel it in my faculties. The state of Saiv of Kalalman means that there's a state of the self 
that is completely divine. It is divine. That's what it is. It is divine. If it is divine, nothing it can do can take it away from the divine. That's what it is. A person, for example, can decide that he's a horse. You can eat like a horse. We know that there's people that way. You could live like a horse. You could behave like a horse. But you still won't be a horse. You're still a human being. Are you living like a horse? You're behaving like a horse? Fine. But the person cannot be not a person. I'm still a person, even if it's not expressed that way. Since Yisrael is a chelak halakamimal, it's alakos. So therefore, it, it, it is what it is. It, it's always one. It cannot be disconnected. Ah, he karis the karis hanefesh. That was said on Yaakov, not on Yisrael. The sikum, the nekudas hadavar, the nekuda that we learned was that just like by Hashem, we speak about the sources in Zayar. It says, Ihu kalam and of kalam. We talk about two forms, Kivayachal, of divine energy. One that is restricted and limited and tailor made and custom made to the individual capacity and identity of every single creature, doimem, tzemeya, chay, medaber, gashmi, ruchni, this world, higher worlds, all the way to the highest, highest, nivroyim and ashamas. And then there's seiv of kalaman, which is the atuhu, at shaloy nivroyim, atuhu mish nivroyim, ani Hashem loy shanisi, where there's no change whatsoever, pre-creation, post-creation, higher worlds, lower worlds, higher creatures, lower creatures, Shabbos, Yom Tif, this time, that time, all space, all time, is really equal because Saif of Kalaman represents God in his full, uninhibited, infinite expression and presence, and therefore there's absolutely no differentiation, and that's why it's called Saif of like the eagle. From any angle, it's always the same circle, the same shape, in other words, the same inten- symbolically, the same intensity, the same energy, the same presence. It's just one is not perceived consciously in the parameters of a creature because for me to be me, I have to only have a limited energy so I should be able to be me. We know even within ourselves, if our brain would not be such a good filter and would not uh, serve as a filter for maybe 99.9% of our emotions that are subconscious, it would be very difficult to survive. Thank God our brain, our conscious brain, filters out so much information from inside and gives us only a little trickle and even that's not so easy to deal with. <laughs> but uh, so even to, 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 to find out more of yourselves of, of yourself is, is overwhelming imagine a person to experience in a conscious way the infinity of Saif of Kalalman if all if, if that would happen everything would appear as is it would be part of the infinite so the individual identity and experience and ups and downs of every single person is all based on that trickling little drops of energy that's called Hashem fills the worlds, fills the worlds like a water fills the keli, the way that the keli could contain it, can experience it like a shear that is tailor made to the student a tutor who speaks to the student according to his level, his madre you can be teaching him a Pasuk Chumash the Pasuk Chumash may have mefarshim that allow you to speak about this Pasuk for 10 hours or a Mishnah that you can speak about for, for 2 weeks or a suga gemara that's complex, but you're literally giving over one dimension that works according to the kalim, to the confinements of his brain. Where Saif of Kalaman represents the uninhibited, infinite presence of God in his own reality, not mitigated, not diluted, not compromised. The wine is not diluted by water. That's what we call Saif of The neshama also operates in these two levels, because the Neshama is B'Tselem Elikim, V'Yivra, V'Yivra Elikim, Es Adam B'Tselem, B'Tselem Elikim, so therefore, the Neshama also has both of these dimensions, Yaakov and Yisrael. What are these two dimensions of the Neshama? The Yaakov dimension of the Neshama represents Memali, the Yisrael represents Saibah, and the Nekuda of the difference was, Right? The Nikud of the difference was the Mamale of the Neshama is, he said two things. Number one, the Yud, and then number two, the Ekev, the Seichel of the Neshama, and the Chiyos of the Neshama. And that is just like Mamale Kalaman. It's the way we experience a trickle of our soul. We experience our soul as the electricity of the body, the life force of the body, the chiyus of the body, the vice, spiritual vitality of the body. That which gives the guf, all the ramach ivarim and the chasa gidim, their battery, the engine, the fuel, what we call the soul, the consciousness. And that itself, that's no small thing, just like Mamalik Alaman is no small thing. God creating the world and vivifying, vivifying the universe is no small 
is no small matter. It's basically all in the world, word Reboino Shalaylam, the master of the world. Bora Boire Oilam. Mamale is no small thing. Mamale itself, of course, is infinite when we speak about it in, in terms of the human capacity, right? I mentioned to you once a Yerushalmi in Masecha Sanhedrin that Ilu Kol Boy Oilam Miskansen Einun Yechaylam Livre Afilu Yitush Echot. If all of humanity comes together, seven billion people, with all the scientists and chemists and engineers, they couldn't create even one flea, one mosquito. So that's no small uh, work of art, work of magic to create, work of, uh, of, of, of stupendous nature and ability. But nonetheless, it's called mamali. So there's the neshama as the vivifying force of the body. There's the neshama even deeper as the seichel, the, capa- the consciousness of a soul. An animal also has a consciousness. An animal also has a life. And everything, everything in the world has a life force. But the human life force, the soul, is that the seichel of the soul, that it can be, even be masik elikus, it can even be masik transcendent truth, the origin of truth, the source of, of the universe, the fact that the universe has, has a creator, and understand that, at least on some level we mean, on some level that which a brain, the brain of the soul could wrap itself around, as he's spoken, ki seitzil ha-malchama, ma'amlichim, ma'shabchim, ma'farim, ma'amnitzim, ma'amdishim, ma'amlichim, as shame, as shame ha-kel. The name, at least the name, the reputation, the projection. But then there's another aspect to the neshama. What's that? Soiv of Kalam. What is that? That's the neshama as is. Not the way the neshama trickles down into our body. In other words, I feel that I'm alive. I maybe can't define what it is. But a person feels, Baruch Hashem, that they're alive. Maybe we don't know how to articulate it. We, we still don't know what it is exactly. Nobody can define what it is. But, but a person feels something. A person has a mind, a person has a consciousness, a person breathes, a person has a life. However you define it, you can define it in so many different ways, but this is something we can wrap our vocabulary around. That's the mamali of the neshama, the yakov of the neshama, which is yud and akev. And then you have the yisrael of the neshama, the head of the neshama, the lead rosh of the neshama, which is a reflection of Saiv of Kalam and meaning what the Neshama is in its actual core, what it is. What is it? Not the way it's perceived and projected and experienced, which is only a reflection, a ray, a glimmer. What is the Neshama? He says this is beyond the body, even beyond Seichel, beyond being in, it's a Chelik Elikam Mal. It is Kevayachal, part of the Divine. And therefore, he says, it's Eina Nifredis, Rumani is Baruch B'Shem Oifen. It can't be separated. It's Echad, Yochid, and Meyuchad, Im Hashem is Baruch in his language, Belish, Shom Pirud, B'Shem Oifen. It's completely one, united, singular, intimately uh, unified for eternity with God, and there cannot be any separation under any circumstances. Even a Kal Shabbatalim, even the most lightheaded of Jews, possesses this because this is the inherent state of who, of what his or her neshama is, I, he, or de, she has done many things, or said things, or thought things, or lived a life that would seem to compromise the dvekas with Hashem, he says, no, this aspect of the soul, the core of the soul, is always unified, there's nothing you can do to sever it from God. I, the Pasuk says, he karis, he karis hanefesh, there's certain averis, that warrant karis, which means, as the Pasuk says, nefeshahi, the soul gets cut off. He says, the klal is, that's always said on the level of Yaakov. That aspect of the soul, that is a limited dimension that is experienced in the consciousness of the human being, that could be severed. However, when you speak about Yisrael, no Peter the shayach b'shum oif. Masha Kosov, two lines from the bottom, 124, the right column. Masha Kosov, here we have a Shtarka Kash. Shabbos Shuvah, there's going to be a Haftar. And that Haftar comes from the Novi Hoshea, the prophet Isaiah. And how does he start off? Why is it called Shabbos Shuvah? Shuvah Yisrael Ada Shemalakacha. Knew who has to return? <laughs> Yaakov Yisrael. Shuvah Yisrael. It doesn't say Shuvah Yaakov. Shuvi Yisrael ad Hashem alakech. Umar shekosev shuvi Yisrael ad havai alakech. Velechaydu hu tamua. Yisrael ma'achoto. Yisrael, we said, never sin. Valoyena nefredes. And therefore never separated. Umar tzarech lut shuvi doesn't have to return. 
What does it mean Yisrael loy chata? He means all chet cannot come from Yisrael. Yisrael by definition cannot be in a chet. Because what is Yisrael? Yisrael is divine. Is complete. That is its identity. It is, so to speak, a reflection, a spark, a glimmer, a fragment of the divine energy, of the divine presence, of the divine reality, of the Creator. So Chet is not Shaykh to Yisrael. So when a person sins, when a person alienates themselves from God, it never involves the Yisrael dimension. The Yisrael always remains wholesome, sacred, pure, divine, connected. So what's the Shuvi Yisrael? Come back Yisrael. Achzeo Shamar Navi says that's why Eshe'a Navi, he knows your problem. So that's why he says, Ki, Koshalta Ba'avoynech. Shuva Yisrael, because you stumbled on your sin. And the key word here is Koshalta. Why am I saying Shuva Yisrael? Not Ki, you have to return because you sinned. Why am I saying Shuva Yisrael? Ki, Koshalta Ba'avoynech. Al Derech Moshe, let's give a Mosh. Odama Nichshel Beragloi Be'evin Hakoak Tana. A person is walking on the road, and on the bottom, on the, on the road, there is a rock, and he doesn't realize there's a rock. So his foot stumbles upon the rock, and he trips. So his whole body falls. And he trips, even the head bangs down to the, to the earth, because the head is actually higher. So he says, But where did the person stumble? The person stumbled... In his foot, not in his head. The head was walking. But usually a person is walking, you're walking, you have balance. That's why you could walk. The person stumbles. So now they trip, they lose their balance, and the body falls. It says, kachu hanimshon. That's the word kashalta, kashalta, like from the word kishalain, a stumbling block. When, when you have a rock there, a stum- it's a stumbling block, you trip over it, it's called a kishlain. When a person stumbles, even on what we call a light Aveda, for example, he had the ability to learn Torah and he did not learn. Or a bitl mitzvah essay, for example, he had the ability to give tzedakah and he did not give tzedakah. Certainly when he transgresses a mitzvah loisasa, in other words, not even when he's mavatla mitzvah's essay, which is passivity, he could do something and he could not, and he does not. I could give tzedakah, but I don't. I could learn Torah, but I don't. So the Aveda was passive. Certainly when he transgresses a mitzvah's license, in other words, actively, that's why it's some culture gain. Av shenir adam Aveda ktani, even though to the person it appears as an insignificant transgression, a minute Aveda. V'hu k'moyshe docha ragle mimokem ma'amadei v'hu chlekmat. So it basically would appear to him like Dacharagla, his foot got pushed away from its standing, from its position. And it slipped a little bit. It slipped. There's a rock there and it slipped. The rock would be like the Aveda that causes the leg to slip. Afkan, Shenichshel Ba'avoin Hana. So even also in this situation when he stumbles with this sin, the Hainu Ragle Hanasham of Yaakov, who stumbles? The foot, the legs of the neshama, which is Yaakov, machmazen noifel haneshama b'chines Yisrael l'tzad acher. So what happens now is the head of the neshama, the Yisrael of the neshama, is out of balance. It's not in sync with the foot. It's now turns to the other side. They're not working in a seamless. They're not working together in a synchronized fashion. When you're walking straight, so the head, the torso. The thighs, the feet, the legs, and the feet are all in one kaima. Huh? They're, they're working in unison. So the person, there's a flow from the head to the feet. When the person slips, when the person stumbles on the evan, so they get out of sync, they lose, literally, physically, they lose their balance. So he says, The head is not shining anymore. There's no flow, there's no ha'ara, there's no light from the head into the heel. I knew an example for this is It would be like when the moon, during the time of the month, that it comes distant from the sun, meaning it's not that the sun is not shining. Of course the sun is shining. It's just 
the lower half of the ball, the 180 degrees, the half of the ball of the moon that we observe, which is called Chetzi HaTachtel, the lower half that's observed to, the, to, the, to those who, who live on the planet Earth, is Chayshech, it's dark. Why? Because there's no sun? No. L'fishayin HaMekabal Eir HaShamish. Because the moon is not in the position where it can uh, receive and then reflect the light of the sun. It doesn't have light on its own. Kach, on this the Pasuk says, HaRishayim B'chayshech Yidmu. The Rishayim live. They, um, they compare their life to a life of darkness. What's Pshat? V'haneshama Shebetoi Chaguf Eina Meir Eklam. The neshama that's in the guf does not shine in the guf. Hainu shein meir ba mebchines Yisrael shu bchines shimsha. Yisrael is the sun. Yaakov is the moon. And the sun is not being reflected in the moon, but the sun is not affected at all. The sun is not reflected at all. Val zayesh loyma. This is pshat of David HaMelech in Tehillim, Memtes, Pidish. Avoin akevai yisubeini. The sin of my, of my souls, of akevai, my akev, Surrounds me, Pidush. Even though the chet only happens on the level of akev, avoyna kevai. All chet happens on the level of akev, meaning it happens only in the feet of the soul. In kolzezel hagoyim shagam pchinas hasoyvev vamakiv shalanasham eine meir yisubeni. It affects the rosh in the sense that there's no flow from the rosh to the regal. Even though it's in Akevai, but the Yisubeni now is out of sync with the Regal. Vizel Inyan, this is also Pshat in the Pasuk, Avoy Noisai Avru Roshi. They pass over my head. In other words, they cause the feet not to be able to receive the energy from the head. Velazet Sarach Shuvah. This is what Shuvah is. What did he explain here? Your Typhus, the Nekudah. The Nekudah here is Shuvah Yisrael Ad Hashem Alekecha. Not because Yisrael got separated. Yisrael never separated. Yisrael never sinned. Yisrael is in complete, perfect dveikas with Hashem under all circumstances and situations. And there's nothing the person can do to tarnish, affect, damage, and undo that relationship. There's a state of inner well-being and wholesomeness that could not be compromised even by a human being who committed some of the greatest mistakes in his life. And genuine mistakes, grave, grave errors. The Yisrael will not be affected. Why? Because it can't be. Because by definition, it is chelik eli kamimal. That's what it is. I shuvah Yisrael ad Hashem alekecha ki chashalta bavenach. What can happen in life is that you don't know about your Yisrael. You're disconnected from experiencing your Yisrael. When a person is walking. The head is in unison with the feet. When the person stumbles, ki chashalta ba'avaynecha. So who, who, who stumbles? Not the head. The head doesn't hit the rock. The feet hit the rock. Chashalta ba'avaynecha. But what happens? As a result of that, the person loses balance. The head is letzad acher of the guf. And that's why the person falls. Because they don't have that synchronization, that chibur, that yichud between the rosh and the guf and the regal. What does this mean on a spiritual level? What it means is the marshal of the sun and the moon. The sun is always shining. You cannot say, oh, today the sun is not shining. The question is, does the moon reflect the light of the sun? Does the moon not reflect the light of the sun? The moon, when it's dark, doesn't change the sun. The sun is completely intact. But the position of the moon at certain points of the month don't allow us to see in the moon the light of the sun. So what happens at a certain point in life is, what does hate do? What do certain experiences in life do? They don't allow you to access and to feel your wholesomeness, your sacredness, your intimacy with God. Because there's no synchronization, there's no flow of energy that comes from the Rosh to the Regal. The sun is completely intact. But the moon is not reflecting the sun. Avoyna kevai yisubeini. And therefore we say shuva Yisrael ad Hashem you need to do tshuva. What's tshuva? Tshuva is not that Yisrael has to return. Shuva Yisrael ad Hashem Yisrael has to be reflected in the Yaakov. Ki chashalta ba'avinecha. So what do you need tshuva? You need tshuva to be able to figure out, who, to be able to access 
your inner purity that I, that was always there that you're not you're not aware of. Yeah, <clears throat> it's because the feet are not in a position where they're capable of sensing the light, the information that comes from the head. So the head There's a disruption. The head should have controlled the feet. The head should have informed the feet. Should it? Yeah. Right. No, the head has to inform the feet. Oh, sorry. The head has to inform the feet because the feet don't know why it can't feel. Right. The moon thinks the sun stopped shining. So someone has to tell the moon, right. no, the sun never stops yeah. shining, it's still there, but right. you have to realize that it's something uh, yeah. deeper than that. No, the, the gets hit. no, no, Yisrael remains intact like the sun. The Yisrael remains. The point is, the person falls, the head is not in the same, uh, in the same uh, alignment. alignment with the body. That's the point. It's not that it gets hit. Right, cool. right. Huh? So that's why you need Shuva Yisrael. This is why you need Shuva. You need Yisrael to come back. Yisrael, you have to return. Not that the Yisrael was, the Yisrael was never separated. But you don't feel that you weren't separated. You feel that you were separated. So you need to bring the Yisrael back. You need to align this, the, the moon with the sun. Okay, well, let's discuss Shuva Yisrael. We'll soon see Hashem Alekach. Okay, the Gemara says Gershon is Gary Kikatan Shanoilo Domi. It's like a process of birth. Gaitis is a process of birth. That's a Pshat Kikatan Shanoilo Domi. Yeah, the Chida also says that it says in, 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 in Shas, you always have, there's a Lashen Katan Shanis Gadl, right? It should have said Goy Shanis Gayer. Why does it say Gershon is Gayer? The Lashen should have been Goy Shanis Gayer, Katan Shanis Gadl. You don't say Gadl Shanis Gadl. Why do you say Gersh Shanis Gayer? So the Chida writes because even before that there was a Nitzutz. What compels him to become a gayer is that before that there was already the spark of the Jew in him. That's why he wants to become a gayer. Why should somebody be compelled to go through a gayer? I'm talking about genuine gayers. They really want to convert to the Jewish people, not stump for an external reason. That's a good Shiloh, but it's not for now. Now, here we have... Here we have a, uh, a fundamental yesoid that, of course, relates to tshuva, but really re- relates to all distortions of life. Avoinus in terms of sins, but also avoinus in terms of mistakes and in terms of uh, traumatic or difficult experiences. So you have here a fundamental idea that's being conveyed, and that is... Never do you have to create well-being. You never have to create a self that is healthy. You never have to create a self that's wholesome, a self that's confident, a self that's joyous, a self that's powerful, that's optimistic, that, is, uh, that has self-esteem, that has what we would call the stamina to live. You have to access it. You have to find it. Because there's a space that's immune from all sin and therefore immune, of course, from all mistakes and therefore, of course, immune to all abuse. So even a human being who has endured traumatic experiences throughout their life, either because of causes within themselves or causes outside of themselves, either maliciously or unintentionally, as a result of loved ones or as a result of strangers, and often a person feels like damaged goods. I'm damaged goods. And now when I'm 20, I'm 30, I'm 40, I'm trying to reinvent myself, I have to reinvent myself. So the Yisoy the Balatanya establishes here is, no. Just like Soiviv Kalalman, Kivayachal. There's nothing ever that can change it. No circumstances, no circumstances, no experiences, no decisions can destroy and undermine and obliterate the core soul of the person, which is essentially a chelik elikamimal, and which is always, always, always in a wholesome state. And it's always like the divine. So it says, Oiz v'ched, we say in Hoidu, Oiz v'ched there's confidence and joy in his space. So anything that's in his space is full of confidence and full of joy. So in the Yisrael state, you have all the 
confidence, all the wholesomeness, all the kedusha, all the purity. It's basically impeccable. It's basically as invincible as the divine. Ani Hashem Leishanisi. The challenge in life is, am I aware of that part of me? Am I cognizant of that part of me? Am I in touch with that part of me? Can I live by that part? Can I breathe that part? Can I experience it? Can I feel it? Can I operate? Can my operating system be navigated and governed by Yisrael? What sin does to a person is it creates alienation from your perfect self. So that you don't know who you are. You don't know how good you are. Which brings us to another very dear, very powerful and maybe daring idea. This means that sometimes what's worse, what becomes the greatest sin, is not the sin. Because the sin happened on a level of Yaakov. <laughs> the problem is, Avoyna keva yisubeni. That as a result of the sin, you think you're a sinner. That's what happens. On the sin, you could do tshuva. <laughs> on believing that you're a sinner, on this, it's very hard to do tshuva. Because this, you think, is coming from your Yetzir Toiv. <laughs> I did an Aveda, but I do tshuva. Ask Mechila. You could do tshuva. It says, Hanan Amar B'Lis Loich is a real thing. It's not a, it's not a joke. <laughs> You'll soon see how he discusses. Baruch Hatar Shem It's not a joke. Do tshuva. But when I think that I'm damaged, I'm a sinner, I'm the, the guilt that sets into my psyche, I think it's coming from Yetzir Toiv. I, I hate myself for it. That sin is sometimes worse than the original sin. That's why I said before Slichas, Reb Simcha Binim said, right? What's the Slach Lanu of Inoki Chatanu by Maid of Afti and Kippur? <laughs> How much could people sin between Ne'ila and Maid of? What they do already? Everybody's in a rush, so nobody's talking, Bechlal, right? What, 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 what should we have it? So, it's not a joke, you get up by Maid of Slach Lanu of Inoki Chatanu. Okay, so there's different Pedushim, I mean, Gemara says, Baba Ben Buta. <laughs> he said, uh, he, Question is, do you have to bring a would you have to bring a chatas shmein a machrus yom hakipurim? Okay, the Gemara discusses it. There's a lot of biurim on this, but Reb Simcha Binim of Shishcha said one taish slach lo no avinu ki chatanu. What's the chet? The chet is for the sin that I don't believe that you really forgave me. I don't really believe you forgave me. I, I don't believe that there's a clean slate. I'm still going back to the damaged version of self. It's like a scratch CD what they used to call a scratched record. <laughs> you remember? And it repeats the same note. Uh, you're stuck on it. You're stuck. So you have that CD replaying in your, in, your, in your brain that I'm a chet, I'm a mistake, I'm damaged. And you have this especially with people who have been, have been through difficult experiences, consciously or unconsciously, and they almost can't get out of it. They remain stuck in that space. So that, in a way, becomes even worse than the chet. Why? Because the chet, okay, it, 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 it caused the foot to stumble and fall. But now I think that there's no head anymore. That's who I am. I don't realize, I don't recognize the Yisrael. That's why shuva Yisrael, that's what shuva is. But you know what real shuva is? Real shuva is this. Real tshuva, this shuva, of course, fixing the Aveda. Fine, that's the basics. I insulted you, I go over to you, I apologize. I go to God, I say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I have remorse, resolution. That's how Lacha of Tshuva, the Rambam defines it in Hilchus Tshuva. Charat over Kabbalah Lahaba. But the, the Mohus, the real essence of Tshuva, what he teaches here, Shuvi Yisrael Hashem Alekech, is the real realization that you never sinned. That's what Tshuva is. Tshuva is the realization that you never sinned. What do you mean you did? No, no, you did not sin. You did not sin. If you were in touch with you, you would have not sinned. The reason you sinned was because you were not in touch with you. If you would have been aware of your Yisrael, if you would be cognizant of your Yisrael, you would never sin. In other words, you never sinned. Your Yisrael never sinned. You were alienated from yourself. You didn't feel yourself. You had a void. And the reason you have a void is because you don't know how good you are. You don't know how holy you are. You don't know how sacred you are. Of course you need sin. You got to fill that void somehow. Ask any couple. If a couple is having the most amazing, incredible relationship with each other. Amazing. Really fulfilling. I don't only mean it looks good for the pictures. 
I mean really, really fulfilling. How often do you think there would be betrayal of the relationship under those circumstances? The person doesn't have to go anywhere else. Why? Because your, your, your void is being filled. This, this is awesome. It's beautiful. The Chet Egel happened only because Zem Moshe Ish Danu I don't know what happened to my Moshe. He went up to a mountain. I don't have him anymore. Danu So now you need substitutes. So in a relationship, you understand if you're feeling the presence of the other person, if you're breathing their ear, if there's a real dveikus, pashtun gashmias, you don't have to go elsewhere. The reason you're going elsewhere is because you're unsatisfied. That's why people always go elsewhere. You have to fill voids. There's pain that you got to dull. People don't like to be in pain. You have to pain. You have to dull pain. All addiction is based on this, or bechal habits, whatever they are. Even not addiction, just habits, instincts. It's you're reacting to danger. You're reacting to a feeling of uncertainty, temper outbursts, rages. People become what they don't want to become because they are not full. They're not fulfilled. Why are they not fulfilled? Because they don't know how good they are. Because they don't know about their Yisrael. So the real tshuva means realizing that you never sinned. That the Yisrael never sinned. You never sinned. Fakert. You weren't you. That's why you sinned. So Melo, what is tshuva? Tshuva is learning about the you that never sinned. Learning about the you that never, that, that never went wrong. That's what tshuva is. Tshuva is discovering that there's a self that was never in a bad space. The fa- and if you keep on talking about what a bad space you're in, that's not tshuva. <laughs> it sounds like tshuva, but it's the opposite of tshuva. When people talk about, I'm in a terrible bad space, I'm so bad, bad, it sounds like tshuva, right? Guilt, it, it, it sounds very Jewish. It sounds very Jewish. Huh? You'll be Michael, but some of the Hasidim. The Hasidim don't have a monopoly on this. Some other Jews also have guilt, trust me. Not only the Hasidim. Okay, you, you may have an extra dosage of it, fine. It's a Hidu Mitzvah. You know, but, uh, but uh, it's, not, uh, it's not limited. Right? It sounds very chuvadic. I'm bad, you're bad. Whatever, all these good, all these, all these beautiful things are meant to inspire people. So they may be meant to inspire people, but the messages people are hearing is often the exact opposite of what real tshuva is. Because real tshuva means that you're actually not in a bad space. You're in a wonderful space. You're in a perfect space. Now just see that in yourself. Somebody once shared with me something very moving, very deep. They went, they had a lot of emotional trauma in their life, a lot, a lot. Very sensitive, very sensitive and bright soul, spiritual soul. And he went for this very heavy uh, treatment of it. And it was, it did very well. He had good professionals dealing with it. And at some point they do like a meditation where you meet your inner child the way it was before all the experiences. You know, you try to meet yourself as a one-year-old child, a two-year-old, a three-year-old, before you went through everything you went through, and you try like, to interview it. Like, you know, what it was like. You know, what, what type of person were you like? Which, if you wish, if I want to make this a contemporary Yisrael, in many ways, is an inner child. It's, it's an inner core divine child. Kinar Yisrael v'oi havehu. There's a Shem Shmuel who says... Uh, I think in Vayigash, Yehuda tells Binyamin, Eich ele el avi vahanar einenu iti benafshoi kshura benafshoi. So he says, the Zoyar says, Hanesham nikra nar. I can't go to my father and tell him the nar is not with me. Benafshoi kshura benafshoi. Benafshoi kshura benafshoi. And that's when Yosef comes out of hiding. Yosef essentially is the Jew who goes into hiding. Right? He puts on masks. He becomes an Egyptian prime minister. Vayakar Yosef v'sechev v'hem lo yikiru. Yehuda says, Eich ele lovi v'nari nenu iti v'nafshe kshura v'nafshe. He reveals the kesher of binyamin to Yaakov. Binyamin comes out of prison. Yosef comes out of hiding. So anyway, this guy, so in this meditation, they go back to childhood. Mamish young childhood. I guess it's a whole visual, a whole process. So he told me that at some point he got very emotional and he started to cry. And he starts speaking to his inner child. 
and he tells his inner child, I just want to apologize. I want to apologize for abandoning you. I abandoned you. I just, I, I gave you to the wolves. I let the sharks take over. I didn't know better because I was a young kid. I didn't have the maturity, the wisdom, the, the confidence to discern, you know, right from wrong, healthy functionality from abuse and so forth. But I abandoned you. I just let you be eaten up and devoured and destroyed. And he tells me that his inner child spoke back to him and said, I'm actually fine. I was always fine. I was just waiting for you to come back to me. You don't have to apologize to me. I was fine. I went into hiding. I was fine. I'm protected. I'm a protected being. No one, no one abuses me. I'm good. I was waiting for you to come back to me. And uh, this changed his life. Why did it change his life? Because he realized at that point, he didn't have to apologize to his inner child. His inner child was completely wholesome. Yisrael is good. I'm good. Why am I good? Because I was never bad. <laughs> Nothing, I'm not bad. I'm good. I'm wonderful. You're a chelik elikami mal. It's not, it's not a joke. That's what you really are. The problem is you don't know who you are. I was waiting for you to come back. So you say, Shuvi Yisrael Ad Hashem Olekechem. Not that the Yisrael has to do Shuvi. Yisrael, come back. Let me feel you. Ki. Why ki? Ki chashal t'bavina. And the regal stumbled and therefore got out of sync with itself. And therefore, avoyna kevai. Yisubeni. I told you once a vart from Rabbi Yashaber Soloveitchik. I think I told you. It's an incredible rich vart. The Gemara says in Chagiga that uh, Elisha ben Avuya told Reb Meir he can't do tshuva. Why? So the Yerushalmi says in Chagiga in Bavli, it's Bekitze, in Yerushalmi's Berich, is that he was horseback riding Yom Kippur Shechali is B'Shabbos. Horseback riding on Yom Kippur on Shabbos. Where? On the Harabais. <laughs> From all places. He chose to go horseback riding Yom Kippur Shabbos on the Harabais. And when he came on his horse, he went by Beis Kotshe HaKadoshim. This is after the Churban. He hears a baskel from the Kaddish HaKadoshim on Yom Kippur. Shuvu bonim shevavim, chutz meyachim. Children, come back. Shuvu bonim, it's a pasuk in Yecheska, we say it in the Ila. Shuvu bonim, we say it in Slichis. Shuvu bonim shevavim, come back children who went astray. Shevavim are, you know, shavav, troublemakers. Chutz meyachim, besides achim. Hashem told me no truth. That's what he said. So the question is, the klal in halacha ain't l'cha dover aymed b'fnei ha-tshuva. The Rambam says in Hilchus Tshuva, everybody could do tshuva, even Menashe. Menashe Melech Yisrael killed Yeshaya, could do tshuva. Suddenly here there's a man who can't do tshuva. Mat nazach. Why? Everybody could do tshuva besides Elisha ben Avuya, one Jew in history is off, off limits. The Shalot HaKa writes that he shouldn't have listened to the Basque. Because the Gemara says, kol ma'ashayim al-cha balabayis asei chutz mitzei. Whatever a balabayis tells you in the house, you have to do besides if he tells you to leave the house. You come to somebody's house, you listen to the host. If the host says, leave, you don't have to listen. Elisha ben Avuya, he has to listen to whatever Hashem says. The moment Hashem says, say, I don't want you. Get out of my house. Chutz he says, I don't have to listen to you. Shalaz vart. Get no small vart. Shalah kadosh. But this is a shayla. But that's what he should have done. But how can the baskel even say this? So some of Hashem say, Eh mashkechim b'baskel, teru leib ha-shamayimi. All nice and good, but how could the Baskel say? Baskel is not a Sheker, it's a Baskel from uh, Titus, it came from Kaitish HaKadosh. Yashabar said, as I, in Yerushalmi, the, the story is a drop different than in Bavli. In Bavli, in Chagiga Dav Tesvav, it says, Shuvu Bonim Shevavim Chutz Me'acher. In Yerushalmi, it says, Shuvu Bonim Shevavim Chutz Me'alisha Ben Avuya. So what did the Baskel say? Did the Baskel say everyone is welcome besides Ache? Or did the Baskel say everybody is welcome besides Elisha ben Avuya? And why did the Chazal make that distinction in Bavli one version, Yerushalmi another version? Halacha <laughs> Bavli. The Baskel said, Shuvu bonam shevavam chutz me'ache. That's what it said. What he heard was, Shuvu bonam shevavam chutz me'elisha ben Avuya. What the Baskel was saying is, Elisha ben Avuya, of course I want you to come back. You're my child. 
shuvu bonam. He's talking to him. You're my child. Chutz me acher. I don't want the acher. The acher in you I'm rejecting. Take your acher and leave it outside. Leave it chutz. Your perception of yourself as an acher, as a foreigner, as an alien, as, a, as, as an intruder. That I don't want. That I reject. But that's not you. You're my Ben. You're my child. Of course I want you. Shuvu Bonim, you're my child. Chutz my acher. Let go of your acher. Let me tell you your story. You're a child. You're a good boy. <laughs> you're my kid. Elamai, one day this, this black cloud, this dibuk, as he put it, this schwarz dibuk, <coughs> set into your psyche and you decided that you're a, you're a min, you're an apicotus, you're an alien. You became an accomplice to the Romans. But that's not you, you're a ben. That's what the Baskal said. But what did he hear? He heard something else. He heard Shuvu Banam Shaivavim Chutzme Elisha Benavuya. In his mind, Elisha Benavuya and Acher became synonymous. He was the Acher. There was no distinction in what there was no Elisha Benavuya and Acher. Elisha Benavuya was the Acher. I am the Acher. There's no Acher in me. That is who <coughs> I am. I am damaged. I am scarred. I am abused. I was molested. I was wounded. I am the sinner. I. The moment that happens, he extricated himself from redemption, from healing. Because what, 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 what somebody says to you and what you hear them say to you is not the same thing. Never the same thing. That's a big klal in life. What you say and what your wife hears you say, it's never the same. What your wife says and what you heard her say is usually not the same. Ask. You'll see. What did you mean? You'll see. It's exact opposite of what you thought. That's the klal in life. <laughs> Very lucky couples who have such communication that what he says she hears and what she says he hears. Most people, they can't hear what the other person said. What they hear is what they want to hear, what they're capable of hearing based on their own stuff, their own issues. The Gemara says, Shadam my lichinai, say Hashem tells Bilam, no, no, then suddenly yes. What you want to hear, that's what you hear. You want to hear yes, says Azayna, yes. What he heard was, Chutz Melisha Benavuya. So what's the essence of tshuva? The essence of tshuva is to be able to hear tshuva bonim sheivavim chutz meyach. Yem kippur shechali is b'shabes. There's a baskel, and the baskel says, "You're a child. You're Yisrael. You're not. You're not a sinner. I have an acher. You have an acher. But the whole reason you sinned is only because the acher in you. It's not you. You never sinned. You're a ben tshuva bonim." This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.